In this video, we're cleaning. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Burn Aquila Painting. My name is Graham and welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at how to look after your airbrush. But first, if you do like the channel, consider subscribing guys. A lot of you guys aren't, and judging by the likes, you do like the videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any Burn Aquila Painting content, hit that subscribe button and smash that bell icon. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a airbrushing 101 video on how to use an airbrush to level up your basic airbrushing skills. And while making that video, I thought, well, if I've shown you guys how to use the airbrush, I might as well show you guys how to clean it and look after it. So here we are, guys and girls. But I bet a couple of you are thinking, well, you just empty the cup, split it out with a bit of water and purge what's left in the system. And yeah, you give it a quick purge after every use, but eventually it'll start slowing down, the amount of paint that comes out will reduce and it will clog. Which brings us to this video. I'm really sorry guys, this video is all about cleaning, so I'm trying to make it as exciting as possible. Once upon a time, there was a boy that wanted to play music to the end of his days. But he failed, and so he picked up the brush. The airbrush. Coming to cinemas nowhere near you. <coughs> terrible. Absolutely bloody terrible. I recommend stripping down your airbrush at least twice a week for the average hobbyist. Once a week if you use it a lot more. I know it's an absolute ball ache, but it is well worth maintaining your equipment. It ensures that they work correctly, last longer, and they're easier to use and more enjoyable to use. It's like coming up to a red light and your brakes don't work because you haven't had your car MOT'd in ages. You just wouldn't. Where was I? So the things you'll need is your airbrush to clean, a pot to dump all your used paint, water, and clean solution out into, some cleaning brushes or some pipe cleaners, some water and airbrush cleaner, or just hot soapy water if you don't have any. So before we get started, you can leave your airbrush to soak, but if you do, use a little bit of water and airbrush cleaner. When you leave it to soak, don't submerge the whole thing. You only want to submerge the cup and the nib. Don't get it anywhere near your trigger. Some people say this is a good idea, some people say it isn't, it's completely up to you. So after a good soak, you need to take your airbrush apart. Make sure you've got a good area when you're cleaning your airbrush and you've got a couple of cups or small containers to put the little bits and bobs in because there will be lots of little fiddly bits you can lose. Just so you guys can see what goes into an airbrush, I'm just putting it on the table and I do recommend putting things in little cups or containers so you don't lose anything. I'm just keeping it all on the table just so you can see all the parts. Each airbrush may come apart differently, so just keep that in mind when you're watching this video. This is how mine comes apart, but I'm pretty sure as a rule of thumb, they're all generally the the same-ish. You can join my Patreon so I can afford a new one and then I'll be able to compare the two. So the first thing we want to do is to take the end cap off. This contains the trigger valve. This will reveal the back end of the needle and the thumb screw that keeps it in place. Undo the screw that releases the needle. Unscrew the housing that keeps the spring and the trigger mechanism. Mechanism, mechanism. mechanism. And slowly pull out the needle. This is the needle that pulls back when we pull the trigger and releases the paint. Be careful not to bend it because they can be quite fragile. The final part to come out is the trigger mechanism and the trigger itself. Now, I'm not too sure if other brands of uh, airbrush, the actual trigger comes off. Mine does, so don't panic if yours does too. I remember when I first stripped my airbrush down to clean and it came out and I freaked out. Next is to unscrew the tip so we can get to the nib that holds the end of the needle in place. This is where the very end of the needle goes through, creating the stop for the paint until you pull back on the trigger, which then releases the paint to go through to the air which then gets propelled to the mini. It's this part of the airbrush that builds up the most paint because that's where the paint goes through from the cup. So make sure we're cleaning all these parts really well. The nib does screw off and it should have a little tool with your airbrush just to unscrew it. Now this part is really small, so be careful when you're cleaning because it's really easy to lose. Also, it's really easy to cross thread when putting it back on. So make sure it's all lined up before you screw it tight. So the way I clean my airbrush is basically just to take it all apart and give all the parts a really good scrub. So you see here, I've got a little pot of water. I just put a little bit of my cleaning solution in it. I use Vallejo airbrush cleaner because one, it's really good. Two, it acts as a lubricant. You just need a couple of squirts of it in the water and there you go. And from there, take your pipe cleaners or your cleaning brushes, give a good swill in your cleaning solution and just give it a good scrub in the inside of all the parts 
that you're cleaning. Go through each part of the airbrush, cleaning them one by one. So before filming this, I just primed my Blight Lord Terminators for another video. Look out for that in the future. So after that, my airbrush was pretty gunked up with primer and a couple of days worth of paint. So it was perfect to show you how to clean it all out. And you can see in my cleaning solution that all the little flecks of paint and primer, that's all the stuff that's getting stuck inside your airbrush. And this is why we need to give it a good clean every so often. All that builds up over time and clogs it all up, no matter how well you purge it after every use. And it's really simple. It's basically the exact same thing for each part of the airbrush. Give it a good scrub, soak it for a couple of minutes if you can't get the hard stuff off, and then give it another scrub. Once everything's really nice and clean, just dry everything off with a paper towel. This is really important for the, all the internal bits that don't like water. You don't want things to get tarnished up or rusty or anything like that because it will affect how the airbrush operates. So make sure they're nice and dry. And the cleaning's done. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you there. Let's go through it step by step and put this airbrush together because I know the first time you do, it can be quite daunting. So don't worry. Let's put it back together. Also, I recommend saving this video. So next time you take your airbrush apart, you can follow these steps to put it back together again without any hassle. Also, while you're there, consider liking and having a quick comment. What do you think of the video so far? Is your airbrush different? If so, how? Which airbrush do you have and which one would you recommend getting? It really helps these videos and really helps the channel out, guys. So thanks very much in advance. Also, another little tip is I recommend getting some something called PTFE tape. PTFE tape basically is designed to seal any connection points so where you screw on your air hose from your compressor to your airbrush put it around the threads a couple of times at the screw point screw it on and it'll help to reduce the amount of air lost through those connection points this will help maintain the pressure in your airbrush making it flow better so putting your airbrush back together is exactly the same as taking it apart but obviously in reverse so we start by reattaching the airline valve. Then we put the airbrushes mechanisms inner housing back in. The spring goes on the slot to the back of that, ending with the screw of the mechanisms exterior housing. Make sure not to tighten this all the way up. Then pull the housing back and add the trigger, making sure that it's the right way round. Once the trigger's in place, then tighten up the main housing at the back. It was at this point that I realized I'd forgotten to clean the needle. So really easy, get some kitchen roll, put some cleaning fluid on it and give it a quick wipe. Now, when slotting the needle back into the airbrush, be careful. It's really easy to knock the needle into internal parts of the mechanism. Also, remember to reattach the nib and the tip of the airbrush. Don't forget like I did. <laughs> Next, add the screw that holds the needle in place and reattach the back cap. And that is it. Your airbrush is ready for some more painting abuse well that's it for me at burning color painting thank you so much for sticking around to the end and i hope you enjoyed it it does mean a lot to me that you're still here make sure to like the video if you did and leave a comment what do you think of this video if you like what i'm doing here at burning color painting and want to support the channel you can and the best place to do it is on my patreon for just two pound a month you can support the channel but if you want to be a little bit more involved you can there you get access to patreon shout outs on the channel whip updates for things from i'm building and painting behind the scenes you can request any video ideas you may have or any minis you want to see me paint on the channel also both tiers have access to the burnt aquila painting discord server where you can chat to me ask any questions or just chat amongst yourselves and just generally chat hobby so go and check the burnt aquila patreon in the link below that is it from me at Bernard Quiller Painting. Thanks again for sticking around to the end. Subscribe if for more content at Bernard Quiller Painting. Smash that bell icon so you don't miss anything. And until next time, peace!